and presentation. First, Esperanza and her family were on a Mexican ranch and were very happy until her father died from a bandit attack. Next, Esperanza's uncle, Tio Lewis, came over and asked her mother to marry him. Mama tricked him by saying yes, then they escaped to California. But unfortunately, Abby Lita couldn't come because she was, in a, she was injured in a fire. Finally, they ended up at the camp. Their family was reunited and ambulate the game. This is a great book. It's entertaining and had lots of conversation, quite a bit of action. Just an overall good book. It has lots of good characters. Thank you and bye. This is my one pager called Esperanza's Adventure. The reason it is called Esperanza's Adventure is because she travels a lot in the book. This summary is a short summary about the book. My personal opinion is that this is a great book that deserves a sequel. The setting, I think, is in a plane with lots of houses for the workers to live in. The border, the border is the money symbol because money is talked about lots in the book. That's it for my one page. This is my Esperanza Rising one page, and I will be reading it to you. Esperanza Rising. First off is my summary. Esperanza Rising is a story about a young girl that leaves her original surroundings and is put in a completely new place that gives her challenges that completely changes her attitude. Esperanza and her mother had gone to California and because of a dust storm, her mother gets very sick. So Esperanza had to work in the fields. Miguel steals the money that Esperanza had saved to help her grandmother get to the U.S. Of course, Esperanza got upset and had to work even more. A few days later, Miguel comes back with their grandmother that he managed to get across the border. Next up is my personal opinion. I really like this and enjoyed the story because of how strong, hardworking, and determined Esperanza was to keep her and her family safe. easier to understand than what we've been using before. He um he does number lines really well. I mean he's not Mr. Shul if you know what I mean, but <laughs> he would add rectangles to the top of them to symbolize fractions and it really helped. We learned about decimals I meant fractions, uh, how they how to line them up and to how to uh, like subtract them and add them and he was really good at it he wasn't he wasn't like um he wasn't he wasn't like move on really fast like into the problem and then go he was he was more calm and he did so he let us answer him and then he was like good job and he was like he was telling us how the what the hole is and like one fraction, two fraction, and all that. It was easier because he doesn't. He's not. He's not like whole math. How they don't put out the stuff like the pictures, so that they can write it like make them bigger, so that you can write them in, and it makes it easier because it's more simple. If you can look at the picture and be able to find it out and like write in like if it's one third, you can write one third how many times you need. So it's easier that way. 